Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, what you have before you is the uh, the fruits of my labor over the last few months. Um, I've been out of town for work in Arkansas, but uh, I'm done for the summer for the most part. i got to go back for a short couple days, but uh, I'm back in Alabama and see some of the cards that are here waiting for me. So I'm going to showcase kind of the stuff I'm buying. It's going to be a two-part video. So uh, this one I'll constitute primarily basketball because half of it is basketball. Seems to be that there's a lot more basketball cards for sale right now. It's probably because the season's in full force, at least the playoffs. So a lot more people are trying to capitalize on that by selling that. And I have been trying to to buy what I think is good deals, but also stuff that I'm interested in, something that I like to collect. So that if I'm not looking to sell anything, uh, but there are stuff that maybe I'm when I buy, I think long term, maybe will hold its value. Uh, it's a very uncertain time economically in this country. So I would... Uh, caution anyone to uh to not spend anything they don't have because time now is not the time to try to flip things now if you're looking to long-term hold there's some good deals to be had and that's kind of what i was looking at with these these are all long-term holds for me and for my collection so without further delay let's look at a couple of vintage pieces uh, now these are csg slabs uh, but i'm able to get these for less than five dollars a piece you got a Dave Cowens and Robert Parrish, uh, second year card from the Parish. They look better than the uh, the CSG grades would indicate. Uh, an additional, another CSG and Moses Malone. And uh, another tactic that I've been using is bundling. So I bundled all three of these from the same auction. So you combine shipping and handling, it's hard to, uh, like shipping and handling is expensive. It's just gotten really expensive. And because uh, it's expensive to ship stuff, to mail stuff. So. Like everything's going up in cost. Uh, I got this Net Assets Kevin Garnett in an 8.5 from my Garnett collection. Got it raw. I want to get one graded. Not a big Beckett fan at all. But uh, when, you got, <laughs> when you see it, you see it, right? So I got it. Uh, some mid-Jordan, uh, mid like 90s Jordan stuff. His hoops. Um, Michael Jordan's Playground. This is a VHS cassette tape I had as a kid. So I was happy to get this. It reminds me of those memories. Of that, uh, watching that movie over and over again in my mom and dad's basement in the 90s. Uh, 92 Ultra Michael Jordan. Nice shiny 98 Encore. I try to buy my Jordans around $10 a piece or less. And a lot of these I got for $10 less. And when I bundle them, you know, you're paying about a dollar shipping on the cost average. I, I just can't turn that stuff down. Uh, Jordan, there you go, a couple of those. These are very low-end, low-end Jordans. Yeah, you're not going to see an 86 Fleer in here, sorry. Uh, this is a cool one with the, uh, the Jordan 5s. I remember when those came out my 8th grade year. Uh, everyone wanted one, a pair of those. I did not have a pair, could not afford a pair. Low-end bundled card here, this uh, Topps Gold, David Robinson. All right, the next part of this lot, these are all Shaq rookies right here. Uh, this is the only one that I didn't buy in a group, so I bought this for less than ten dollars, uh, which I thought was a steal, a great deal. We're going to see a bunch more of these uh, probably come out as a lot of those uh, returns come back from PSA for those folks that were sending these in in mass. I don't need a high grade of it, but you know, I, I don't think an eight dollar card is going to go down all that much in value. Uh, these ones I bundled all together to combine shipping and got great deals on them couple of stadium clubs. I look to get any these Shaq rookies around, uh, the non-tops ones, around, you know, six to seven dollars a piece, maybe. I think I got both these Fleer ones for less than seven dollars each. I already have four of them that I paid a lot more money for a couple months ago. Uh, a couple of the hoops. Didn't have any of these in the uh, PSA slab, so got uh, good price on those. You're paying a little bit more for a 9 than an 8. But like I said, the market's going to see plenty of these cards. They are not hard to find right now as the market's kind of flooded with them. So I'm picking these up. Definitely not to flip. Man, these are long-term holds for me. Like, just like, I don't know if I ever sell them. So Skybox, I like this one. Cool image. Probably one of my favorite Shaq rookie images. Another one of the upper decks in a 9. And some lower end kind here with these classics, uh, the draft picks. Two more. The four sport, 
two variations or two different cards in that set. The All-American and the regular base, I think. Ooh, almost done with the shack. One more. This is a the Orlando variation. Don't know how rare that is. I'm sure there's a ton of them out there from this era. But the McDonald's version of the shack. A couple more 90 stuff. Here's a gold Alonzo Morning rookie card. Didn't have that one yet, so got that. And then uh, this lot of three more Alonzo Morning rookies I bought. Very inexpensively. And with combined shipping, it was a steal. Two of the tops and nines. And then this Fleer and a nine as well. It's easy to get Alonzo Morning cards in nines. Fairly inexpensive. He's way under the radar. Not that his stuff's ever going to explode because it won't. But if you enjoy basketball from that era, you enjoy Alonzo Morning, that kind of style of play that he had, it's definitely easy to pick up to, to, to satisfy that itch, if you will. A couple more Hall of Famers from uh, 93 and 94, respectively, with Chris Webber, Jason Kidd. This is a classic case of what's going on right now. This lot I paid uh, very little for. So both of these cards are uh, one for the minimum bid of a dollar. And the seller was great. Helped me uh, get them all bundled together and uh, gave me a decent price on shipping and handling. Shipped the cards excellently. Uh, they came without a scratch and uh, really pleased and left positive feedback for the seller. That's pretty much all they'll get out of this as they'll probably take a huge loss on these cards. Even this uh, near mint to mint 8 only cost a, a dollar. There's no one else bid on it. And then three of these signature rookies. You've got uh, two of them that are the uh, the regular one of uh, 6,500. There's an autograph version of this as well. And then this promo, which I imagine is, I don't know if it's rare or not, but uh, a little bit more. I think I paid $2.30 for this, a dollar for the other two. So in all, the seller didn't really make anything on that, but uh, I was very appreciative of him being honest about it and still sending the cards. Uh, this Cyber Metal is the biggest card of the purchase. I uh, wanted this card for a long time, long time. So I figured I'd go and pop on it and bought it for, I think it's 88 bucks. I paid for it. Um, with, you know, with tax and shipping, you know, it's going to be a $100 card at the end of it. So I thought, uh, you know what, I'll take a risk on that. Allen Iverson, uh, his finest second series. Not the gold one, but the, uh, the Sterling. Cool. Stadium Club, uh, Rookies 2. A Zensation. An insert from the Z-Force. And then uh, bundle these cards together. The Sky Force, or Skybox Z Force, excuse me. Cool cards. See a lot of the commonalities. I'm looking for eights, maybe a nine here or there, but I'm looking around $10 price points for a lot of these cards. A lot of them. This one's a great example of a card I've been looking to pick up for a while. This Ellen Iverson second year Metal Universe. Uh, this is the Reebok Silver version. Just a cool card up front. It's got the. Uh, the balloon make world balloon mar maker <laughs> machine right there. It's just so it it it, uh, it takes me back to that era of the mid nine mid you know ninety six ninety seven where computers were just starting to become uh, mainstream uh, in regards to the internet usage and such. But uh, cool card and on the back it's got the Reebok designator. That's why it says Reebok Silver up there. You can get a bronze variation. I imagine there's a gold. I don't know. Somebody let me know. A hollow view hollow view uh, once again ten dollars. I didn't bundle this together, but I really wanted this card because uh, I like that hollow view. I think there's 20 in this. Actually, there's 20. I know there's maybe 30 in the set, and they're not that random. They're kind of a not a real random insert, but it's tough if you want to get a particular player because it's such a big subset. A couple of these uh, Nash's Fleer Metal Rookies I didn't have. Bundled these actually from a Probstein auction. Got them for about 20 bucks combined. So I was pleased with that. A Chauncey Billups hardwood hopeful with the clear acetate. You can see my finger back behind that. The third best rookie from that 97 class and not a Hall of Famer. But this guy, uh, the best from that 97 class and a true Hall of Famer, Tim Duncan. This card right here, I've been wanting to get in a PSA slab and got it for less than $10 finally. And then a couple of these, uh, eight and a nine, I bundled together. 
Last basketball card I'm going to show. A 2003 Chris Bosch rookie card. Okay, less than five bucks. Couldn't turn it down. That's uh, that's basketball. Uh, my next video I'm going to cover foot, uh, baseball, football, and some miscellaneous. So uh, stick around and uh, thanks again. Appreciate your posts, your comments. I'll talk to you again soon.